In case anybody just came in, my name is Damian Taylor. I'm an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation and the volunteer coordinator for the Claudia Carina um, Vote Socialist 2024 campaign. And um, we're really excited about this, this program, um, the potential for working class people to unite around a common program of socialism and to basically take the power that we deserve. We're the ones who make this country run. We should be the ones running it. And we feel like this campaign is the catalyst for growing a people's movement. And to learn the organizational skills and personal development that goes into organizing, and that's kind of what I was speaking to a second ago, is you know, we, we, we'd like to think of ourselves as, you know, like the example of what the future could look like and to, to develop leaders out of the struggle who can actually confront the existing power structure and change things. We all know we need change. So, um, yeah, that was uh, off the top of my head. I've never really done that before, but um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's humbling and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of the kind of, it's just the sort of thing that you just got to rip off the Band-Aid and just get in there and, um, you know, and I think that that's what we can do, all do together, is just, you know, come together and realize that we all bring all these different sets of experiences and skills to the table and organizing ourselves in a way where we can realize the potential um, is just so much greater when we can do that together and it's a learning process and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to have success and um, we're just always going to be moving forward so thank you for coming today and um, really excited to get this going so Sam Sam Bliss from Marxist Jargon haven't been like approved by the party for socialism and liberation or anything like that but you'll find that it's aligned <clears throat> robber barons are the ultimate karens they hoard all the riches wouldn't think of sharing with us instead they jet set to summits of the powerful where poverty's an abstract problem to discuss but really it's simple some people have little precisely because Others take lots for themselves and then they dare to complain about the poor and blame them for not having their fair share of the wealth. But all the billionaires are good people deep down. Just get to the bottom of the ocean there. They can drown for all I care. They treat us like livestock and serfs. They take all the money and we do all the work plus their jerks. Howard Schultz says billionaire's a bad word. I agree, we should find a better term like exploiter or extractor, con man or just thief, motherfucker or monster, illegitimate chief. We're coming with torches and pitchforks to their porches. It's gonna be gorgeous when we burn their McMansions to the ground. Or maybe we should just take them for the town. Tell our homeless friends, look at this big house we found. Imagine how many people could be housed When you got a billion bucks, you can't just give it away Without exercising the enormous sway You hold over the world when you choose who to give it to And who not to give it to That power's not something you can't donate All the billionaires are good people deep down
for selfish and arrogance, evil and terrible, greedy, unbearable, rapacious snitch. With really loaded parents, all the billionaires are good people deep down at the bottom of the ocean. There they can drown for all I care. They treat us like we're livestock and serfs. They take all the money and we do all the work plus their jerks. The filthy rich are suffering too. Their parents are and unhappy, it's true. But don't forget they don't give a damn about you. My name is Alex, my pronouns are she, her. I'm with uh, the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Uh, welcome. Today we are officially uh, launching our campaign to get Claudia de la Cruz and Karina Garcia on the ballot in Vermont. Our goal is to build a party that actively represents the working class, because it is the working class. We are going to introduce our candidates, Claudia and Karina, running for president and vice president of the United States. We want to share our party platform and how socialism is our best hope for peace and a future worth fighting for. An alarming rate. A global pandemic, our government's abysmal response, environmental protection slashed, police brutality, military invasions, blatant political corruption, Roe v. Wade overturned, a growing unhoused population and housing funds terminated, droughts, floods, and wildfires, new anti-trans legislation, mass shootings, over 600 in 2023 alone, and the list goes on and on. Even those with a stable income have found their laborers worth less and less. Wages are stagnant, but inflation is out of control. Our people are subsisting on fewer resources all the time, and it's no coincidence that the wealth of the billionaire class has more than doubled since 2020. Where did that money come from? Where it always comes from? Us. None of this is a coincidence. Our society was built this way. The extreme imbalance maintained by the brutal criminal inju injustice system and the mirage of the American dream. Under capitalism, crises will continue to multiply and we continue to pay for them. We did not vote for any of this, but our elected officials did, opting to preserve their careers and or outright serve the corporate elite. Monday's city council decision was a great example of an elected body's blatant disregard for our democratic rights. How many of you were at that city council meeting on Monday? So why are we hopeful? We, but we are hopeful, we're even excited. We're hopeful because since the last election, we've learned that we don't have to take it. The people are finding their voices and taking to the streets. We were in the streets when George Floyd was murdered. We marched for peace and an end to the US proxy war in Russia. We came out for the Teamsters in a hot labor summer and we're still out here in our thousands and our millions to demand an end to the genocide of the Pal our Palestinian siblings and an end to all USA to Israel. We fought alongside many of you in this room, refusing to be silent and go about our business while the money that, that our labor earned is used to kill other poor and working people. And we're not alone. We're part of an international movement that is still growing. These mass movements are the seeds of a new political party, one that answers only to the people because it is the people. Socialism means an empowered working class. And we're, ex we're excited because right now our class is waking up and flexing its muscles. We are proud to introduce our candidate for president, Claudia de la Cruz. Claudia is a mother, a popular educator, and a community organizer. Born in the South Bronx to immigrant parents from the Dominican Republic, she was nourished by the black and Caribbean working class communities. She began organizing at the age of 13 with her church and has made a lifelong commitment to fight together with a working class to improve our lives. She has been inspired by national liberation struggles from Puerto Rico, Palestine, peasant struggles in Brazil, the Cuban Revolution, and many others. She has staunchly stood against US and Western imperialism. She is co-executive director and co-founder of the People's Forum in New York City. 
an educational and organizing hub in the largest city in the country. Here she continues her nearly 30-year legacy of building a people's movement for inter international liberation and socialism. This is exactly the kind of president we need, someone who understands the international needs of the working class here in the United States. We are equally proud to introduce our candidate for vice president, Karina Garcia. Karina is a Chicana organizer and popular educator who has been fighting for a better world since she was 17 years old as a high school student in California. From El Barrio in New York City to the border areas of Texas, she has helped lead campaigns against landlord abuses, wage theft, and police brutality, as well as fight for reproductive justice, immigrant rights, and student financial reform. She is the founder of the Justice Center in El Barrio in New York City and is a member of the Central Committee of the Party for Socialism and Liberation. She has her degree in economics and worked as a New York City math teacher upon graduating. After school, she advised a student group that protested against budget cuts, the Iraq War, police brutality, and anti-immigrant laws. In 2012, she moved into a national organizing position for the National Latina Institute for Reproductive Justice, where she worked for nearly a decade, training immigrant women and working class Latina activists in New York, Texas, Virginia, and Florida. Karina also writes for Breaking the Chains magazine, which you can get over there, a unique socialist and fem feminist magazine, and she played a leading role in organizing mobilizations against the Supreme Court decision that eviscerated abortion rights. I don't know about you, but I am so proud to say that I am voting for socialism in 2024. I am voting for Claudia and Karina. Our political platform is ambitious because working people need, to d need and deserve to live with dignity and enjoy the wealth we produce for this country. Our political program is to seize the biggest 100 corporations and create a new economy for the people. Overthrow the dictatorship of the rich, build a democracy that serves the working class. End the rule of money and lock up the corrupt elite. Cut the military budget by 90%. Peace, not war with China and Russia. End the war on black America and defend women's rights, full equality for LGBTQ people. Which of these changes to our country would mean the most for you? What would it mean for you and you and your community? And now we will uh, pair up and talk about the platform and how you want to get involved. First of all, thank you for supporting Palestine, the ones that I see who are. And I hope you all. Um, second, secondly, I think we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't, when it comes to the election. Look what we've got. We've got no choice. On one, on one side, you never know what that fool is going to do. On the other side, you know damn well what that fool is going to do. So what do you do? <laughs> That's a good question. I guess so. I think that that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're not really under the illusion that a third party has the potential to win the presidency in the United States. But we should leave no stone unturned. You know, we should we should interact at every level we can, and the electoral process which is kind of like a soap opera drama here in this country, is a period of time when the population is at their like highest level of political consciousness. You know, they're like the most engaged and they'll, they'll be for the, the rest of the three years in that cycle. And that's like a really important time to like bring a program that's like unashamed about what we deserve and want to do. And use that time and that experience to build a network of organized, professional, disciplined people that can challenge what's going on. So um, that's, that's what this campaign is about. It's about not so much about winning the presidency, because we believe that democracy under capitalism is incompatible, you know, that it, it just can't, it's, it's an illusion. 
when you have so much money going in, bribing these politicians to create policy that suits the ruling class, you know, like that. That's not really a democracy. So we're here to like sharpen that contrast of these contradictions and to sh and to start proving that there's another way that we can do it. So, is, is that? Will. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with Barbara and. I think that the main thing that we sort of emphasized was that idea of, it, it summed up very well in a tweet of all things I read recently, which is, what do you even call it when you can only vote for one person or democracy dies forever? Where the Democrats at this point are holding the gun of Donald Trump to our head and telling us, oh, well, if you don't vote for us, you get this guy. So you just have to suck it up, vote for us, and do whatever the hell we say, and you don't have a choice in this matter. And what I think we need to acknowledge is that is true. We don't have a choice. We can vote for whoever we would like. We can vote in any way that we would like, and it will not ultimately matter because the design of this country is to make sure that the rich remain in power, that a tiny few remain in control. And to even think for a second that there would be some way through an electoral system, that there would be some way through a democratic system to overturn that is foolish. Ultimately, the point of this campaign, as you just said, should be to get people involved, it should be to get people militant, it should be above all else to get people organized. It should be to start building the base right here, right now, that can grow into something much larger. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's actually the idea of this, just that we want to we want to develop ourselves into you know into people who are like smarter and stronger and more capable than we are before we started. And when we do that together, that there's like the most amount of potential. You know? If we set out to try and make change on our own. Yeah, we can do some things, but it's not until we come together and learn from each other and work together that we can actually take all of our energy and focus it into one point and then focus that point right at the power structure. You know? So we really hope that you all would like to join this campaign, maybe join the PSL, and just get involved and start you know, developing ourselves together. Jackson. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about what we were talking about, the idea democracy and pe a lot of people um, are realizing but like Trump got elected because people were so angry at and you know like his the right wing populism um, and now people are realizing you know Biden is not people are primary in him but he's just like I don't know what you're talking about um, not that the primary candidates are not good anyways but um, and then in the past few years like Bernie getting snubbed by the DNC again not that he's that good of a candidate anyways but people are realizing people are getting angry, and so we have to organize the anger into something, instead of just physically kind of. Yeah, and letting it just fragment into yeah. like all these like little like, you know, silos of struggles, you know. Single issue struggles <coughs> are great, but you know, in the PSL, you know, we, we recognize and we assert the fact that like all of these problems are absolutely connected, and you know, that by challenging this system of capitalism, which we believe to be like the, the reason for these problems, like the profit motives, especially, you know, leading us down the path of like war, and losing our rights left and right, you know, like reproductive rights, and um, you know, it's it, it 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 is capitalism, and we're we're never going to change it unless we can come together. History has proven that, that it takes mass movements of people to make change. And um, yeah, we're excited about the possibilities. Does anybody else want to share something from the conversation? Um, uh, yeah, please, Micah. I, I was just going to expand on something else we talked about, how, um, like we were talking about the hearing on Monday, mm -hmm. and how we don't have any way to hold those in charge accountable even when they don't do what we elected them to do. And how that's super important because that happens again and again. It, like, like Joe Biden was like, no more student debt. Oh, just kidding. We're gonna pay off some. Oh, we're gonna pay off a little less than that actually. Like, yeah, yeah, just 
keeping to like backpedal and just like break promises. And there's nothing we can do about that. So I think that's a great like uh, thing to rally on. And it's a great thing to try to accomplish because then we can move on to other issues so much easier. Right? Yeah, well, they're not going to listen to us if we're all standing there one by one trying to like say, like, look, man, we can't live like this. But if we were all together and we were organized and like, you know, competent and trained, you know, that, that's going to that's gonna be a force that they can't stop. You know? the, the working class has all the power. We just don't know it yet. And it's, it's seeing the turnout for today like really does inspire like a lot of confidence that we can actually do this. It's like to be sort of slogan but like to go off that and say that individually we can all be saying we can't live like this, but together we can say we won't live like this. Yeah. Well, it means a lot that y'all shared and that you're all here. And um, you know, we wanted to just like talk real quick about you know why we're voting um, socialist and I'd like to invite Wes up here to give us share thoughts. Hello, I'm Wesley Palmer. Uh, I am with PSL. I am a member. I joined fairly recently um, after October 7th um, because I see what's happening um, in Gaza. 30,000 Palestinians are dead um, because Joe Biden would rather send our money to war and occupation. And I just can't stand by that. Yeah. Um, I know a few people, uh, met a few people on the street a couple of weeks ago, um, and two of them have been homeless for the past eight years. Um, they told me about a week ago how excited they were that they were finally going to start getting an apartment and that they can finally stop living out of their friend's car. They don't touch substances, they don't touch, they, uh, their boyfriend has a disability. Um, and it's just really hard for them to maintain stability and to keep a job or to just even like try to find an apartment and don't even get me started on the paperwork that they have to deal with. <coughs> Yesterday afternoon, I say, what's up to them? And I say, long time no see, like, how have you guys been? Like, how's everything going? Did you work everything out with the housing association? And they told me that because the girlfriend did not have a disability, they put her at the bottom of the list. She can't get an apartment. She's gonna to have to probably wait another year or another two years. It's just ridiculous. Um, and while all our taxpayer dollars are going to war, while they are killing children in places that we don't belong in, you have Vermont residents who are still sleeping out on the streets their entire life. This is how they're going to spend their lives. Unless we stick together, unless we all unite together and vote for a socialist party, a working class party, a party meant for the working class, a party meant for each and every single one of us to defend ourselves because the two party system is a lie. Donald Trump, Joe Biden, the rest of those Republicans, Democrats, whoever, they don't represent us. They represent the upper echelons, the corporate, the rich, filthy rich clique that has been exploiting us for hundreds of thousands of years and will continue to both internationally, nationally, and locally. All these situations, all these problems are connected and it's killing each and every single one of us unless we all vote together and we all rise up and we you know, look out for each other. So I say money for housing and education, not for deals in dis death, destruction, and war and occupation. And that's why I'm voting for Claudia and Karina, and I'm voting Socialist 2024. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to? 
share why maybe you might be willing to vote for Claudia and Korea this year? It's okay if you don't, but it's over here. Someone to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we can definitely move on. I am actually. That's hey. the, oh, I've already spoken a lot, it's fine. No, no, please. You're so well spoken. I don't mind being on TV. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Will. Uh, I'm 20 years old, and with everything that's working out, I'll probably make it to 50 if I am lucky. Uh, the planet's on fire. Look outside. This shit is not January. This shit is March. This shit was March for most of my life, and I don't even know what it was supposed to be before that because I never grew up at any point in the world that had a normal climate, that had a normal set of weather. I never grew up in a I never grew up around the natural foliage and wildlife that existed in this country before Europeans came and destroyed it all. I have spent my entire life watching the world just get worse, day by day by day. Things have only ever fallen apart around me, things have only burned around me, and I think I speak for a pretty fucking huge part of my generation when I say, if you expect me to stand by and watch that and look at that and be okay with that because that's how things are, because that's how the world should work, because I just don't understand the complexities of the system, you can go fuck yourself. I'm not listening to that. I'm not abiding by that. I'm not working for that. I'm not okay with that. Nobody should be. Beyond that, specifically why I would vote in 2024 is because, again, I think we need to send the message to Biden. We need to send the message to the Democrats, you know, Republicans aside, obviously, that we're not okay with this shit anymore. We're not putting up with it. We're not going to be your dogs who just sit back, vote for whatever you say, do whatever you say, and act however you like. We, as a people, are sick and tired of just having our votes be assumed towards the Democrats because they're supposed to be the left or because they're supposed to be the good guys in whatever version of history they want to write for us. And for that, I think we need to pick the third option. We need to pick the better option. We need to pick the socialist option. Meet Will, the um, Claudia and Karina um, Burlington lead organizer. <laughs> I just signed you up, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the reasons are obvious for me, and I, I've talked a little bit about that. So I think we should maybe move on because I really love the, the group discussions, and we were hoping just to say a few more things and then have a circle up. Um, we could take a minute to grab some refreshments afterwards, but. Uh, Let's have a talk together after, you know, after this presentation. So the next thing is just, you know, we don't really want your vote. We, we want you guys to be involved. We, we really hope that you, you all sign up for, you know, to take part in this thing that we're trying to build here. And, you know, however, like, whatever kind of a, a bandwidth or, you know, capacity that you have available, like, we, we want you to get involved. So, you know, some of the things that we can do together would be petitioning to get us on the ballot. Um, you know, after talking with some comrades who um, are in other places in the country, you know, we actually have kind of a, an easy walk to get on the ballot as independents. That's how we're going to run here. Um, you know, I was hearing from some folks in North Carolina that they need something like 50,000 signatures to get on the ballot. And it's just like another example of the contradiction of democracy under capitalism you know it's it's not a democracy if you can't actually you know it's it's, it's not it's a bourgeois democracy <coughs> thank you. you you saved me jordan i was like searching for the <laughs> uh, yeah i mean public uh there's all these university studies that sh that you know have proven that you know public policy has very little to do with public opinion and, yeah, and I think I don't think Congress has been over like a thirty something percent uh, approval ratings in like decades. That's like our highest. Like they're at nineteen right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, a lot. It's still too high. <laughs> I mean, these are the contradictions that. I mean, it seems like every day they make it easier and easier. We all saw that viral video of the, of the girl at City Hall last week or last Monday. I mean, really, the contradictions are sharpening more and more every day. So anyways, um, 
raising visibility, you know, being on social media, sharing the content from the campaign. Um, we've got a bunch of extra posters and flyers that you can pins. I'd like to see like all that stuff gone when you leave here today. Um, please feel free to just take it upon yourselves to be a leader in this campaign and to think outside the box about different ways that we can intervene in the community to like bring this really important message forward. Um, recruiting other volunteers, like who, who do you know? Your friends, your, you know, your, the people you work with, the community that you live in. Like where, where can we talk to people? Where can we have the conversations that need to be had to, like, you know, to convince them that this is something that they need to be a part of too? And building out a team. Like we want to have a solid team. You know? I, I'm imagining you know, meetings on a regular you know, basis and training. And I, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. And even today, we were hoping you know, to record some testimonials about like, what you learned today, about why you're voting socialist, about what you want to see for the future, anything at all. You know, like that journalism is super important in this movement. And we'd like to be able to like, make a little compilation of different video clips and put them together and to, be, to, to share to the community, to the world, about you know, what we're doing here. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe some of us would be interested in organizing a campaign um, event at our school, workplace, community. <coughs> and that's, that's the kind of things that we want to learn together. You know, like, it wasn't that long ago that I had never spoken in front of anybody, and <laughs> like I definitely need more practice. But you know, like that's what we want to do. We want to develop ourselves into people who can deliver speeches and who can write speeches and who want to learn photography and video and video editing and screen printing and button making and you know like there's just like a, a there's so many skills that go into trying to make a future that's going to work for all of us. A little off topic for folks who have the machines capable of running video editing software you want to start learning today download Black Magic DaVinci Resolve. It's all in one seat with everything you need for video, audio and also color grading. Okay. Well, I just yeah um, yeah I was I'm learning Premiere Pro right now. I'm like two videos in. It was, <laughs> it's been a like a learning curve. It's like quite the rabbit hole. But there's so many different like levels of accessible programs that are out there. And open the, source Linux, FreeBSD. Check those out. Gra graphic design is another great example. You know the the campaign actually has templates and fonts and color spectrum, you know, like the whole deal, and we can actually make our own agitational material from these templates to have a cohesive branding and style and message. So, like, if anybody's, like, interested in, like, these sorts of things, like, this, this is a great place for us all to, like, develop our skills together. Did, were you still saying something, or we can we can move on? <laughs> Uh, Did you want to uh, say uh, something? I know, I, well, yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> one of the many ways you can also keep money out of corporate software developing coffers is to go the, the open source freeware route with Linux and FreeBSD. Mm. Definitely look those up. If you have an old PC that's not capable of running the latest version of Windows or, or Mac OS, that's not a problem at all with these open source alternatives. That's an excellent point. I, um, I admire that. But they also say the, the capitalists are going to sell us the rope that we hang them with, too. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we can make our own. And we can make it back. <laughs> all right, I just had a couple little notes. And it's more about like you know where, what, what I want to my, my dream about this team that we're going to build here. You know? and, I like actually did voice text as I was driving here from St. Johnsbury, and I just like to like share some of these ideas. So we, we do we want to learn the process of organization for social change, and so much of that is training and personal development, like political education, having study groups, book clubs, learning public speaking, like I was saying, speech writing, event planning fundraising, media skills like video, photography, graphic design, 
outreach, like conversational skills, canvassing, door knocking, phone banking, postering, flyering, wheat pasting, and practical skills like printing media, and button making, and banner making, and zine and book making, and screen printing. And this is like, you know, part of the conversation that we'd like to, you know, move into right now is ways that we can get started. And I know that you all have like really creative ideas about what we could do. Some of the thoughts that I had would be regular meetings online and in person, postering and distributing materials, working on our social media profiles, um, such as like I'm voting socialist in our profile um, bio. bio, having the link to the campaign in the bio, um, sharing the content from the campaign, and um, Claudia and Karina do a weekly live stream um, on there's Instagram. And there's also the official campaign launch tomorrow that you all can check out. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. I'll, we'll make sure to get you the link for that. Um, please check it out. There's also at the same time the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation statewide meeting at the same time, which is where I'll be. But do one of those two things. And that's like your first <laughs> homework. And then, um, yeah, so like I was saying, the, the weekly live stream, it's like a great place to learn about the candidates, to like see them talk, they do it on a weekly basis, and to also direct people to. It's like people are like, I don't know, like socialism sounds a little crazy. You could just be like, just take a couple minutes and like watch this, these, listen to what they have to say. Um, it's fantastic, I mean, I, I highly recommend it. And then also we have monthly, um, volunteer meetings with the campaign and that's you know with the candidates and like the campaign leadership um, that we I think Onyx you, you were at the last one weren't you yeah so um, yeah that's basically what I had to, what I had to say and you know I would I'd like to circle up and we can start brainstorming about ways that we can intervene and what you know where are the people at that we want to talk to and how can we figure out a way to talk to them does that sound like the plan? Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, still a few more snacks around if you want to grab some. And I think we could just make like a little bit more of a complete circle if we wanted. Or we could just keep the formation. But you guys look jammed up over there. <laughs>